All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming to the Idaho STEM Ecosystem sixth webinar, iSTEM Summer Institute's discussion and demo. Um, I just want to thank everybody for attending and coming to learn all about iSTEM and everything that it has to offer. So my name is Ashley Schaffner. I'm the Regional Hub Coordinator for Regions 4, 5, and 6 with the Idaho Ecosystem, and I will be facilitating today's discussion. I also would like to introduce Katie Bush Wilson. She's the iSTEM Coordinator for the Idaho STEM Action Center. So Katie, would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, do you want to change the slide, Ashley? Yes, I should do that. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Katie Bush Wilson, as Ashley said, um, I am new to the STEM Action Center. I've been here about a month. Um, I come directly from the classroom. So I was prior to this position, I was teaching computer science and math. Um, and so one of my roles coming to the STEM Action Center is taking over iSTEM. Um, I'm over also over computer science and then some general STEM things as well. Um, and so I'm kind of I've been drinking out of fire hose a little bit, but it's been really great and I'm learning lots. And so if you have questions, please, please reach out to me. Um, so my email's on the screen, but you also can just simply do iSTEM at um, stem.idaho.gov and that will get to me as well, so. Awesome, all right, thank you, Katie. So for all of the participants here, if we have time at the end, we'll be answering any questions you have. So if you, have a question as we're talking, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll be monitoring that and bring that up at the end. So I wanted to start with what is iSTEM? Well, iSTEM is a professional development opportunity for formal and informal Idaho educators. It's a four-day institute that's offered in June where educators participate in project-based, hands-on learning in a chosen content area that's offered through strands as well as general sessions that are tied to the iSTEM Institute theme. This year's theme is Amplify STEM. So during general sessions, participants will learn how to build an awareness of the value of STEM within their school, organization, and community to help build momentum for STEM education and workforce development. So iSTEM is offered at six locations across the state. Those locations can be seen here. So we have the College of Southern Idaho in Twin Falls, Idaho. We have the College of Western Idaho in Nampa. We have Idaho State University in Pocatello. College of Eastern Idaho in Idaho Falls. Lewis Clark State College in Lewiston. And North Idaho College in Coeur d'Alene. Each location has a site coordinator. Those are listed on this slide as well. Um, and we will be hearing from them or a representative for them here shortly. Oh, no, I clicked. I'm trying to email people, guys. Don't want to email people. Let's try this again. Okay, the dates for the iSTEM Institute is here. So College of Southern Idaho and Lewis Clark State College will be on June 13th through the 16th. Idaho State University will be holding its institute on June 14th through the 17th. College of Eastern Idaho, North Idaho College and College of Western Idaho will all be having theirs on June 21st through the 24th. Um, oh. I'm getting ahead of myself. Hang on. Okay. If you're interested in attending iSTEM, or if you know of anybody who may be interested, you can apply at stem.idaho.gov backslash apply backslash iSTEM. Um, this link will be shared in the chat, as well as at the end of the webinar, there's a slide that has this that we'll leave up so you guys can see it. The cost is $50 for public educators and administrators who are serving Idaho youth ages pre-K through 12th grade. Um, participants walk away with a kit of materials so that they can have the resources they need to implement what they learned right away. Professional development credits are also available through Boise State University and it's $60 a credit. There's a one credit and a two credit option 
Um, so you can make that decision about what you would like to do. When you apply for ISTEM, you're encouraged to attend the institute that's closest to you. However, you are allowed to attend whatever institute you would like. You'll just have to figure out how to get there. Some of them are very far away from each other. All right, so now, uh, um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our site coordinators or the representatives for those site coordinators to share a little bit about themselves, their institute, and some of the strands being offered at their institute. We're gonna start with Katie Bush Wilson. Um, she's gonna share with you what's going on at CSI. So CSI, if um, you've noticed on the couple slides ago, the um, site coordinator for CSI is actually Chris Harper. Unfortunately, he was not able to join us today. Um, but these are the strands that are offered at CSI. There's a really great makeup um, for everything from kindergarten through 12th grade, which is really great because sometimes at the high school level, there <clears throat> seems to be a little bit of a gap. But at CSI, there's such a nice balance. Um, so there's some science strands, some tech strands, some uh, agricultural based strands, some health based strands. And so, so some of those are um, really great fits for different pieces. A couple that <clears throat> I just want to highlight is our ready set drones where um, teachers will be walking away with actual drones. And IDX is a 3D printing strand where teachers will also be getting 3D printers. So those are some really great ones. And then the micro bits um, is actually kind of fun because micro bits apparently are a hot commodity right now. So getting micro bits is a really big deal. And um, Todd was able to find a distributor who had some. So we've actually already gotten those ordered and rolling. Um, so you will be walking away with micro bits um, from that strand as well. And so the hope is um, <clears throat> to have these fill up. And like Ashley said, um, the closest location is where you're encouraged to go, but if you, some of these at CSI um, meet your needs more, we would encourage you to feel free to sign up for those as well. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. So I am actually going to share about Lewis Clark State College. Um, Ken Warham, who is the site coordinator, is actually at a competition right now at Boise State. So that's very exciting. Um, some of the strands being provided here also have a nice range of pre-K through 12th grade. One of those strands is water science investigations and awareness, which is an interactive um, classroom session in the morning and then hands-on place-based investigation of water quality and freshwater ecosystems in the afternoon. Um, there'll be a lot of outdoor classroom projects as well as some in-class learning. We also get to offer two Lego strands um, geared towards different age groups. The first one listed on there is Legos and building a community of STEM learners, which is geared towards second through sixth grade learners. And the second one is Legos in the primary classroom, which is for pre-K through second grade. You get to learn how to use Legos in all sorts of content areas. You'll be given the resources to start using these Legos in your classroom right away. You get to learn about the amazing creations, stations, and challenges that you can have your students try for rich conversations while they're learning to solve some real world problems. We're also lucky to be able to offer a drones strand at LCSC. Um, and in this course, you get to learn the basics of commercial drone operation, and you get to prepare to take the FAA remote pilot certification test so that you can become a lawful commercial drone pilots. You also get to learn basic and advanced techniques for capturing cinematic video and photography with drones, which is pretty exciting and pretty amazing. Next, we will have Katie Leishman from Idaho State University introduce herself. Tell us a little bit about her, um, about iSTEM at ISU and share some of the strands that ISU will be offering. Thank you. Um, my name is Katie Leishman. I'm with Idaho State University. I work in the College of Technology. 
Chris Guthrie is actually your contact person for all of the strands. Um, however, I work very closely with her on all of the K-12 STEM outreach that we do here at our college. And so I'm just filling in for her today. But we, we really do have some pretty interesting strands, um, even just in the names, um, like what are the ingredients required to survive regardless of time, space, and place. I mean, I'm drawn to that just by looking at the title. But um, again, in the, in the strands that we're able to offer, we've, we're covering pre-K all the way through 12th grade. Um, and then for cracking the code, computer science for uh, kindergarten through second and beyond. We have our own Ashley um, doing that strand. She, of course, is the coordinator for this webinar and hostess. So um, we're excited to have that one. And then we have integrating STEM and early elementary education, um, amplifying STEM research, ready, set drones. Um, and I already mentioned what are the ingredients required to survive, but we also have power of earth and space science. And so we're, we're super excited to be able to offer all of these this summer. Can I do a quick follow-up on one of the strands at ISU? Yes, please. So just so everybody is aware, Amplifying STEM Research, Mary um, was, actually, or was actually able to obtain additional funding. So if you're anywhere across the straight state and you travel to ISU for that specific strand, um, you will actually get your travel reimbursed to my understanding. And so that strand is like across the state, you can get support on travel just to attend that strand across the state, so. That is awesome, thank you for sharing. All right, we will now turn it over to Frankie at College of Eastern Idaho. Okay, so my name is Frankie Adams and like Ashley said, I am the site coordinator for College of Eastern Idaho. Um, I'm also the computer technology and STEM program manager for workforce training at College of Eastern Idaho. Um, prior to this position, I taught high school. Um, and so uh, I finally graduated and now I'm in college and in charge of the uh, iSTEM at College of Eastern Idaho. So this year we have six different strands. Um, the farm to classroom strand, that is a new strand at our location and it is designed for uh, third through 12th graders. Um, in this strand participants will get to explore the science of cheese making, technology, and some other nutritional components and the sciences of those. Um, they will take away a kit that has a cheese demo, um, an anim some animal feed samples, also a protein model kit, and then um, a large variety of online resources for the educator to use. So we're excited to have that one. Um, testing the limits and experiencing or experience and adapt a STEM project based learning for uh, high school biology. And so this is a project based learning strand, um, but it is for everyone, whether you're an expert in, in PBL or you're new to PBL, this strand is for everyone. Um, participants will explore the project based learning, um, the instruction using Ed Curious design framework. Um, and in this kit, their takeaway kit, they'll get a uh, curriculum for teaching or for testing the limits using um, the three unit homeostasis and mac macro molecules unit. Um, so that's exciting to have this one. Uh, creative mathematics for all. Um, Shelly has taught this strand for us before and participants love her strand because she teaches that um, in her strand, she goes over math and how we can make math fun and purposeful. Um, she'll discuss the eight mathematical thinking practices. Um, and then her, her kit will include active activity materials, books, um, some origami paper, shape tiles. And like I said, this has been a really popular strand and we're happy to have Shelly back teaching for us this again. Um, and then the science and magic of toys. So uh, this strand is designed for uh, first through ninth graders um, and they will talk about the science um, or, or how science and magic are, are very similar. Uh, they'll learn to um, the, 
pedagogy of STEAM and the NGSS through many different activities. And the kit that they'll walk away with includes um, several different toys, um, building materials and supplies that they can use for do-it-yourself toys. So we're excited to have Karen back. She's taught for us before, but this particular strand is new. Um, and then we have showcase the STEM. Uh, so this is tips, tricks, and tools for video creation and social media. Um, and this strand was designed for third through eighth graders, but I really think it would benefit any grade. Um, so in this strand, they will learn um, how to present using PowerPoint, photos, Flipgrid, TikTok, and how to showcase some of the STEM projects um, with distance learning and flipped learning and the hybrid learning. This this is going to be a, uh, a cool strand for educators to incorporate into their classroom. So uh, finally, we've got the Think Like an Inventor. Um, and this is a new strand as well. It's designed for third and fourth graders. Um, participants will learn the seven principles that Leonardo da Vinci lived by and how to encourage those principles in the classroom. Um, and in the takeaway kit, there will be STEM toys, STEM learning kits, and books that'll go along with it. So um, yeah, we're excited to have each of those strands at College of Eastern Idaho. Awesome. All right, and then the next one is North Idaho College. Uh, Kathy Alvin, unfortunately, is not able to be with us right now, but the amazing thing is, is that North Idaho and LCSC share several of their strands. So again, you have the option of doing ready, set drones, um, working with some, uh, with some drones. You also have Legos and building a community of STEM learners and Legos in the primary classroom. Again, where you get to explore Legos, using them across content areas and really being able to have your students solve real world problems. You have water science investigations and awareness, again, looking at water quality and the ecosystems. You also get STEM powered play, which is uh, unique to North Idaho College, um, apart from LCSC, where they look at play and inquiry-based learning. Um, you get to integrate a lot of STEAM, STEAM with an A, which includes the arts as well as STEM, um, into your classrooms. So they will have some fantastic strands that fit for, um, again, formal and informal educators for ages pre-K all the way up through, it looks like 11th grade, but almost all the way through uh, high school. So now we will um, turn it over to Kay for the College of Western Idaho. Welcome everyone. Thank you for taking some time today to learn more about iSTEM and the kinds of services and things that we are able to provide. I put a link in the chat because I really want to encourage you to use the, the iSTEM um, website, right? The, the application page, lots of information about all of these strands. Very similarly to Northern Idaho, CSI and CWI have a lot of duplication and we are on two different weeks. So if one week is better than the other week, um, be mindful of that in case there are some that sounded really interesting but uh, didn't work for you on um, one of those weeks depending on your primary location. So I won't highlight all of them, um, but I do want to address a couple of them in more specific detail. I really want to highlight build, create, and innovate, which you can see is PK through 12. And you might think, how is that even possible to really cover that entire gambit of ages? But Amber McVeigh is all about how do I use what's all around me to teach STEM? And so the kit is very um, diverse from robots, planks, makey makey, rockets, 3D printers, cardboard, paper circuits. Like really her whole goal is to help educators realize that the tools to teach STEM are all around them and they don't have to be um, especially expensive. Um, the other thing I wanna highlight about Amber 
Amber's been doing iSTEM like me since 2012. She started as a participant. She came for several years and engaged in different strands as an educator and a, a participant, and then transitioned to being a strand leader and really sharing all that she has learned over these years with others. Um, and I think that's one of the great unsung elements of this iSTEM design. So we're super excited to welcome eight different strands. Again, many of them are duplicates of what you'll see at other locations. We've got 3D printers in various kits. We've got the micro bits that were already highlighted from the CSI discussion. Um, Matt and Jan are educators at BSU who help coordinate their I Do Teach program, preparing future educators to be um, STEM teachers. Very um, significant experience in doing this kind of thing. So I'd love to see 120 plus people fill our Micron Education Center, which in and of itself is an experience to be in as you look at ways that um, STEM is used in a variety of careers. So um, look forward to seeing whomever might be able to join us. And as you see in the chat, uh, you know, you could possibly attend two, um, two different sites. So um, looking forward to your questions. The last thing I would add, um, I have been um, the site coordinator for CWI in previous years. Um, however, now I've transitioned to really being uh, more of the administrative liaison, if you will. And so Rhonda Thompson is taking on the official site coordinator role and um, will transition to full leadership throughout this next six months or so. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. And I do just want to reiterate something Kay said. That's exactly how I got involved is I was a participant for years and then became a strand provider. And it's such a fantastic experience to attend iSTEM and then to turn around and also be a strand provider, um, which is why I was so excited to share this with all of you today is it's just, I'm so passionate about it. And I think it's such a wonderful experience. Okay, so now we're going to transition into discussing the iSTEM lending libraries. This is a wonderful resource available at six locations across the state. Most of these locations are at the same place that the iSTEM institutes occur, um, but there is, there is the exception. Um, and they're filled with fantastic resources from previous iSTEM strands, as well as other STEM resources that the library managers at each of these lending libraries have been able to gather for educators to check out and use in their classrooms or their libraries or with their organizations. So we're gonna hear a little bit more about the iSTEM lending libraries in a video. I have tested this video inside out and upside down, but we all know how technology is. So if you cannot hear this video when I play it, please throw that in chat, let me know. Um, so I don't make you suffer through silence for two minutes. Welcome to the latest iteration of the iSTEM Regional Library Network, brought to you by the Idaho STEM Action Center. The iSTEM libraries are a network of six strategically located STEM resource hubs that offer equipment, kits, and teaching technology for Idaho educators like you to check out and use in your classroom or learning space. Beginning this summer 2021, the STEM Action Center is excited to introduce a brand new platform for browsing library materials and accessing instructional resources online. The iSTEM Library's online catalog is a virtual gallery of library materials, organized by site, that shows the available resources at each location, descriptions of each item, related subject matter, recommended grade levels, and whether the item is currently available for checkout. By expanding a record in the gallery, you can access a direct link to a request form for the hosting library. You can also browse specially curated curriculum, videos, and other resources designed to help you get started using the item in your classroom or learning space. The iSTEM Library's online catalog will be hosted on Airtable, a simple user-friendly platform that educators can access for free via web browser or mobile app. Within this platform, you will be able to search for a particular piece of equipment or tool, filter by target grade level or content area, or simply browse until you see something that piques your interest. 
With just a few clicks, you can choose an item, make a request, and learn about all the amazing ways you can incorporate this item into your lessons or programs. Idaho STEM Action Center will be expanding this one-of-a-kind educational resource throughout the summer of 2021 with new items and curriculum added weekly. For the latest project updates, visit stem.idaho.gov slash i-stem-library or contact your local iSTEM library manager. No, I don't want you to play again. Okay, so we are actually going to stop sharing for a moment because we have four of the iSTEM lending libraries um, represented here at the moment. And they're going to either introduce themselves or reintroduce themselves um, and share a resource or tool that they have available at their lending library. So again, we'll start with, um, I guess, I don't know that this is again for you guys. We're gonna start with Katie Leishman at ISU and she will share out um, what she has. Thank you, yeah. So when I was first approached to get to demonstrate or talk about one of the items we have in our library, it was such a hard choice for me um, when looking through all of the amazing things that we have um, available for educators to check out and utilize. But I narrowed it down and I chose the energy of moving water. And um, it's, a, it's a big kit and I'm gonna talk about everything that's included in it. It's not something that's easily demonstrated through Zoom. And so I'm gonna just describe it and walk you through it. But this kit is a classroom kit um, and the kit has enough materials for educators to be able to break students into 12 groups. So depending on the size of a classroom, um, you know, you could group them in two or threes and, and through the kit, they're able to do hands-on learning activities and build six different model hydropower turbines. Um, it was created by the National Energy Education Development Project, and it was developed for grades six through eight, but it can be modified or adapted to fit um, students in lower, higher grades. Um, it's intended to help students develop a comprehensive understanding of energy, electricity, and hydropower through inquiry-based activities. And the kit also includes them, all the materials, um, excuse me, I'm gonna go back just a little bit. It, it's, a, it's a very large kit. You can actually see kind of behind me, um, there's a green tub back there. And so it's, it's very nicely organized in two of those big tubs. So when you come, if this was an item that you wanted to borrow from our library, it's all packed nice and neat into those two tubs. Um, but it has a lot of material in it. And I'm just gonna talk briefly about some of the material that's in it, but they have all sorts of magnets, um, including bar, horseshoe, ring magnets. It also comes with a classroom set of compasses. There's magnetic fill demonstrators, batteries, um, all sorts of sizes of batteries um, to be able to use co coated copper wire, alligator clips, um, a classroom set of motors and hubs. There's water reservoirs, funnels, um, tubing, alligator clips again, and then digital multimeters. Um, through this, students are actually able to learn how to measure voltage. Um, but one of the great, great things about this kit is that it also includes a 60 page student guide. Um, there's 30 of them. So, uh, or they may actually be 60 of them between the two. So enough for the entire class to be able to look at one. And then there's also a 30 page educator guide. The student guide has detailed exper experiment instructions, worksheets that they can work on. Um, and it's broken down. So if you wanted to spend multiple weeks 
on this and do multiple experiments building on each other, you could. It also has measure, measurement charts and a glossary, which is really helpful, especially when you're first introducing some of these, these terms and subjects. And then the educator guide has, of course, answer keys, um, expansion activities. So if you wanted to spend some more time on one of the concepts and one of the experiments, um, you could. And then um, online, through the library checkout system, you can actually download a classroom ready PowerPoint presentation, which I think is, is really convenient and it, it's very well put together. Um, and then there's also online interactive resources that include games where students can go in and kind of do this interactive gameplay with some of the concepts that they've learned. Um, there's also coloring pages and then um, a really nice hydro power diagram that students can play with and kind of build um, in this online um, activity resource. And so it's, it's a really great kit, again, um, for an entire classroom to be able to group students and to do these hands-on activities with everything that you would need for all of the experiments. It's already put together, it's laid out for you. Um, and so you kind of go in, you pick and, and tailor the activities that you want to do, or you, you use them in a sequence to build on each other. But it's a great resource um, and one that's available to you through the ISU iSTEM library. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing, Katie. Um, I do want to throw a little plug. I needed to borrow some Ozobots from the ISU Lending Library, and it's a super simple process. You fill out the form, it gets submitted, and you get an email back, and it was just a fantastic experience. I'm sure it's similar at all of the other um, lending libraries as well. So that's just one little plug I would say. It's an easy process, and it's fantastic to be able to have access to these resources. All right, Frankie. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Um, so like Ashley mentioned, the process is very easy. And for those that are in the CEI, so the Idaho Falls area, um, I am also willing to deliver some of these kits. Um, I'm an educator and so I know that your time is precious and uh, sometimes going to pick up items, you know, takes time. So um, please reach out if you're interested in any of our material and I would be happy to bring it over to your school. So um, like Katie mentioned, there's so many resources in our library, it's hard to pick just one. And so today I am going to show you one of our new kits, one of our new resources. Um, and it is, well, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the 4D animal cell. And we have four of these kits. Um, we also have the plant cell. So you could check out both and students could um, distinguish the different characteristics of a plant cell versus an animal cell. Um, if I remember correctly, that is one of the objectives or the learning outcomes in uh, science for the kiddos. So this um, animal cell, I like it because it's, like I said, it's very hands-on. Um, it comes with the detachable parts. So what they do is they have a stand. Um, it has detachable parts. So an educator could demonstrate each of the organelles and what, they're, what they do in the cell. Um, or they could group the students into little learning pods and let the students experiment with themselves or with their groups. Um, I like that it comes with an assembly guide, it comes with a little assembly guide that gives a breakdown of the um, animal cell anatomy. It also gives a description and a definition and a picture of each of the organelles that come with the 3D model. And there are little pieces. That's, that's the downfall of this kit. There's little pieces. So, um, But it, the assembly guide gives a description of what each of the uh, organelles do. 
Um, and then it also has some fun activities, some um, guess what, some questions that go along with the animal cell. Um, like I said, we also have the plant cell, and so you're able to check those out together and use them. Um, and we have four of each kit. So once you put the model together, they can assemble it. It's got a transparent transparent so they can see through it. Um, I have educators that have races with their students. So each group gets a animal cell and whoever can put it together the fastest wins. Hopefully there's something incorporated in their life. They have to be able to say what each organ organelle does. So um, that's my demonstration, but I have many more uh, tools and resources um, that you that I, I want to encourage you to check out and let me know how I can assist in getting those items to you. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Frankie. All right, Francesca, will you make sure to introduce yourself and then share with us what you have? Yes. Hi, can everyone hear me? Awesome. So as Ashley mentioned, there is like a weird exception for library management and ISM coordination and, and we are said exception. Um, so uh, as I said, my name is Francesca. I work at Gizmo Makerspace. We are on the campus of North Idaho College, but we're an independent nonprofit. Uh, and this is Hannah McMullen. She is our fabulous student worker and current lending library manager. Um, so for anyone in the area, if you are borrowing stuff from our library, you will be interfacing with her. Um, so our library works the same as the other libraries. We're integrated into the um, online system. Uh, you still make a request the same way. We give it to you. Um, a couple of the sort of differences from our library is because we're sort of shared between NIC and Gizmo. Um, we do have a really expansive collection. Um, so we just have some stuff. Uh, we have a, a Glowforge, for example, that you can actually check out, um, which is a pretty exciting tool. Um, that's a miniature laser cutter um, that is adaptable for a variety of educational projects. Um, we do offer training on that. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to demonstrate today for everyone is uh, actually the Lego um, BrickU Essentials um, or Motion Essentials Kit. And this is actually a new, newer version of, um, I think a lot of the libraries have the Lego, we do robotics kits. Um, and Lego is updating these kits every few years. And so we were lucky enough to be able to um, get the uh, new one for the elementary level, which is um, the Brick Hue. Um, they do make that for elementary and middle school. And then there's the Spike, which is for elementary and middle school. Spike focuses more on like actual robotics applications. So it's a little more similar to the WeDo kits. Um, the Brick Hue is new uh, and it's more focused on mechanics and physics. And we were pretty excited about that one. And that's the one I wanted to share with you guys today, just because I know um, we're thinking about uh, how to support, like how to integrate STEM into classrooms specifically, right? And um, you guys have a lot of stuff that you gotta teach. And a lot of the elementary science standards focus on those um, like physics of motion and mechanics. Uh, so the Brick U kit is all dedicated to projects based on that. Um, so I'm gonna actually angle the camera down so you can sort of see uh, the sweet bobsled model that Hannah built. Um, so this is just an example project from the Brick U kit. Um, you know, we picked one that was Winter Olympics themed, uh, but the students assemble this whole thing. There's instructions. And then uh, the idea is that they actually build multiple models. So we've got the model of um, the, with the people on the bobsled, we have um, this, which I know you can't feel this, but this is actually a weighted Lego brick. So it's heavier than the standard Lego brick and um, they can conduct an experiment to changing the variables of the weight on the sled and the shape of the items on the sled to see how far the bobsled actually travels when it comes off the track. Uh, and then there's a printable student worksheet, which we can see um, was filled out here and tested. Um, so it gives them the opportunity to go through that process of experimentation. Um, and uh, so this correlates directly to um, a, a standard and I'll just show you really quickly. There's um, the Lego kits are exciting. Even if you're working with the, the we do kits, like I know a lot of the other libraries have them too. And Lego has a really expansive um, curriculum resource uh, on their website. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen really quick. 
So this is an example of um, what the lesson plan for the bobsled actually looks like. Um, so you can see it has the whole outline. Um, it has sort of a, a hook for the initial engagement of the students, um, as well as this box on the side for teacher support. And you can see right here, there's this drop down that gives you the um, NGSS alignments as well as ISTE um, and Common Core. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then there's also the student materials and student worksheets that you can download. Um, and all of these, um, this is like from a larger unit plan um, that again is available for free on the LEGO website. So that's kind of a cool thing that you can check out uh, and you know do for a couple of days or you could sort of do an entire unit on it depending on how interested you were in working with that. So um, yeah, that, that's the, the LEGO kits. At Gizmo here we have, I think it's we have 12 of the brick U ones. We have 12 of the um, brick U ones and they're designed, the, the way that LEGO designs it is each kit is supposed to be for a group of two students. I think in the past we found that like teachers don't really have a problem having three students work together if you have a larger classroom with more than 24 kids. Um, so we try and keep, we have a set of 12 of the brick U, which again is the mechanics focused and it's, um, we got the elementary level for that one and the robotics one uh, we got from the middle school level and we have 12 of those as well. Um, and a lot of the other libraries in different regions have the Lego We Do kits, which are for elementary and they're, they're pretty awesome as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing um, what you have up there at Gizmo. I'm always amazed with everything I learn about that's available at Gizmo. It's a fantastic resource. All right. And then lastly, we will have Kay share. Hello. So we also have a, a wide variety of kits, particularly after last summer and the video talked about uh, summer of 21. We were able to expand uh, just really quickly. We have some green screens that we were hoping could be really valuable as more and more teachers had to create content that could be delivered online. Um, and even post pandemic, I know my kids schools have moved to um, instead of early release or other strategies for teacher days, um, they just send them home for remote learning. So even as we, we see the end, hopefully to this pandemic, um, those green screens may be useful. We get a lot of donations from Micron Gives, which is the Micron Foundation and the Education Wing. Um, and those plans all come with very detailed lesson plans, which to uh, Francesca's demonstration is, is really such a helpful element for teachers when they can see quickly, how, how do I actually integrate this into the content? Um, that said, one of the items most recently checked out from our library was as a reward for you know, good behavior and getting some content covered in a classroom. And so let's go play with those Ozobots that uh, um, Ashley already mentioned. So those are all awesome, easy to integrate. But what I want to actually share with you today is one of the items that I think we don't, we don't have checked out as much as we should. And that is our solar ovens. And the reason I wanted to talk about these today, although it's like 19 degrees where I'm at today, but in the summer and late spring, um, these can be so fun. And there isn't a detailed lesson plan for how to use it because there's so many cool things that I think teachers could do with these. So we have two of them. And what I would recommend as I encourage people to look at these is plan to have the kids then build their own, right? There are there are a hundred DIY or do it yourself. Yeah, DIY plans out there. Um, and you could do comparisons, right? Why is the formally commercialized version better at melting my s'mores than my homemade version? We have two of the ovens. And so you can compare like the angle that you set the oven at. Um, you actually adjust the angle. You have to keep turning it if you're cooking something for a length of time. Why? Well, depending on the age of the children that you might be working with, talk about how the earth rotates and the sun, and, you know, all of that can be done by this little simple solar oven. Um, and the other reality is that people use it to cook cookies and to make s'mores and which kids don't like to do those kinds of things. So I wanted to highlight this one, but absolutely check out the website so many resources available. 
I wish I could say we're happy to drive them to you. Um, unfortunately, boy, that is a time is such a tough commodity, but we're really flexible and um, want to make them available. My final thought on the libraries before I turn this back over um, is that we also have resources to replenish the kits. So one of the kits that we have checked out is a mystery powder kit. And I know there have been some teachers a little hesitant to check those kinds of things out because they wonder, do I have to replace the sodium bicarbonate that I used in this kit? And you don't have to, right? The libraries are able to do that. So even the consumable items, um, we're really happy to support. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing and thank you to all of you who shared some resources. There are some fantastic things if you ever get a minute to scroll through just what is available. I always get excited and find things that I can do just by exploring what's in there. So I'm going to, oh, I'm going to do something else really fast, hang on. Remember in just a moment, we will be opening it up for questions. So if you have any questions for um, Katie or myself or any of the lending library managers or site coordinators, please put those into the chat. We would love to answer them. But the last thing I was going to share, just one more second, here we go, is the links again for both the iSTEM Institute application as well as the lending libraries. iSTEM applications close on March 6th. I know I can speak for every strand provider and every site coordinator when I say we wanna get as many people signed up as we can. We wanna get these strands filled. So if you or anybody in your network could benefit from any of the strands being offered at iSTEM, please share this link with them. Let them know. I know that the recording for this video will go up on the STEM Action Center ecosystem part of the website so that they can watch the video as well if they're interested. And then also the iSTEM lending libraries. The library managers are wanting people to come use these resources just like Kay said, use some of the things that don't get checked out very often and let the kids enjoy and have fun and play and explore and learn. And there's a lot of fantastic resources that tie with those tools. One last time I was gonna throw up the sites and the site coordinator information. Let's see if I can make us a little bit smaller here. And throw us over here. Okay. Um, so that you can reach out to any of these site coordinators. You can also reach out to Katie Bush Wilson if you have any questions about iSTEM um, or even the lending libraries, they can get you to the correct managers if they are not the manager of the lending library in your area. All right, so are there any questions. While I wait for any to pop up in chat, I did have a couple that I wanted to throw out to um, our library managers and our site coordinators. So at each of the lending libraries, how long can people keep the items they've checked out from you? We typically ask two weeks at the ISU. Um, location. However, we are always happy to accommodate a teacher. So if, if an educator needs it for more than two weeks, um, we will definitely work with them. But typically to about two weeks. Fantastic. And I saw that Kay said it's the same there. Oh, same at Gizmo. And then Frankie, I'm assuming probably about the same. Awesome. Okay, so I have to say both names because I've got two Katie's on here. Katie Bush Wilson, I know we've shared this already once, but how do people get a hold of you if they have questions for you? If you're still here, oh, she's gone. Oh no, she is there. No, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you can either email me at katie.bushwilson at stem.ido.gov, which is really long. So. 
I would just email me at istem at stem.idaho.gov. So that's much easier than my whole long, whole long name, but I can throw that in the chat as well. Um, and so you're welcome to ship me an email that way um, and I'll get back to you. And if it's something that requires a phone call, we can chat on the phone, whatever's best for you. Perfect, thank you. There was also a question about um, getting a link to the previous webinars, which is where this will also show up. And Erica was wonderful to pop that into the chat. It's the Idaho STEM ecosystem website, which you get to off of the STEM Action Center's website. Um, and when you get in there, it's on the right-hand side of the page and you can access those webinars. Um, that was the only question I saw in chat. I don't think I'm missing any. So, uh, site coordinators, now I'm getting mixed up. Um, what are you most looking forward to for iSTEM this year? I'm most looking forward to the in-person, back to the in-person. We had to um, go virtual last year. And um, one of my favorite parts of iSTEM is just the networking opportunity and meeting other educators. And so I'm most excited that we are going to be in-person. I think we probably um, collectively share that sense. Um, it, it really is such a privilege to be able to celebrate our educators. Um, some of the comments that we get at the Treasure Valley iSTEM event, um, you know, they appreciate that we feed them not just lunch, but like breakfast and a snack. And, you know, we really do see this as an opportunity to, to give back to a certain level. Right. Um, it's just such a privilege to acknowledge the work that our that our educators do and then to support them in that by providing this content. Um, so very cool to have them all back in the same room, the energy, the, the sense of excitement and engagement is always so fun. I know one thing I've always loved as a teacher, as an educator, I appreciate that you leave with a toolkit of resources so that you can implement it in your classroom. I've been to way too many professional developments where they show you this awesome thing and then you have to figure out how to get it. And so I love that that's something that iSTEM has done as long as I've been involved is send you with this toolkit of resources. It's fantastic. Okay, so how can people support iSTEM institutes or the iSTEM lending libraries? Will you say that again, Ashley? Yes. So how can people support the iSTEM institutes or the iSTEM lending libraries? Are you talking like big, 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 big support? Or are you talking like signing up? any level of support so there's one point is signing up supports it right absolutely <laughs> but then also on a bigger level um we're always looking for funding support and so if you know an organization that would want to maybe sponsor a strand that would be amazing um and you can have them reach out to me on that also um if for some reason somebody's kit is over the 200 dollars, we ask them to find outside financial support um, with that, and most of those individuals already have, but um, that's an option as well. And then um, if there's cool things that like individuals possibly would want to donate to the lending libraries, like Kay was saying and Francesca was saying, the lending libraries are not just made up of stuff from iSTEM. Um, they can be made up of like, you know, kits that Micron donates or gizmo based kits. And so those would be other opportunities to support that as well. I would also throw out there just as far as teachers are concerned and educators. Um, I hear every year that um, people wanted to sign up for ISM, but they heard about it too late. Um, and with the lending libraries as well, like oftentimes people have no idea that that resource exists in their communities. And so word of mouth um, and like talking about these resources to your colleagues and these opportunities, like being annoying about it, because as we all know, like 
educators right now are having 150 million things thrown at them every single day and need a lot of reminding and need a lot of support. So um, if you know about these resources, like talk them up in your community, help people get connected, be like, I will sit down and show you the link right now. Um, I think that that goes a really long way um, and we appreciate it as well. And the one thing I would also add is if you've utilized the kits, share your lesson plan, tell the story of how you used it, share pictures. Um, you know, we have some really cool things, but if you don't have a sense of how to apply it, you don't get to use that really cool thing. Um, and the reality is that what one teacher does to feed the ideas of another can be so beneficial. Um, so, you know, take advantage of the library, but then give back by sharing how you did it. Well, thank you to all of the presenters who came to help me with this wonderful webinar. And also thank you to all of the participants. I appreciate you taking your time to come listen to us. I'm so passionate about iSTEM and the Lending Libraries. I think it's such a fantastic resource that we have here in Idaho um, that just like Francesca was saying, I just wanna share it with everybody and show them how to get there and get everybody signed up. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Friday.